A spontaneous process happens without ongoing outside intervention. It'll happen spontaneously. Sometimes there needs to be some impetus that gets it started, but after that, no outside influence is, is necessary. This is easy to observe in simple mechanical systems. So here's a guy um, inadvisedly pulling a large weight on a pulley up towards the ceiling. What's going to happen if he lets go of the rope? It's going to fall down. Hopefully it won't land on his foot. Kind of looks like it will. Hopefully it'll get out of the way. That's a spontaneous process. That's going to happen, right? unless you put something in there to prevent it happening. In a, in a chemical system, it's a, little, it's a little harder to think about. Um, this, this mechanical has to do with potential energy. So um, in mechanical systems, things tend towards lower potential energy. You think about a, a ball or a rock rolling down a hill. It's going to roll down to go to lower potential energy, and when it gets to the bottom, it's going to stop, right? So it's going towards lower potential energy. So if we're looking at chemical systems, we can think of a chemical potential and think, well, if we had this quantity of chemical potential, then we could use that to predict whether a reaction would be spontaneous or not, because if it went to lower chemical potential, it should be, it should be spontaneous. Um, we know that sodium chloride, um, solid table salt, if you add water to that, it will dissolve. That is a spontaneous process. Why does it do that? Spontaneous is different than speed of reaction. You can have a spontaneous reaction that's extremely slow, right? You can have non-spontaneous reactions that, if you can make them go, are very fast. So they, they don't correlate at all. A catalyst will affect um, a spontaneous process. It will cause it to go faster. It will speed it up. If the process is not spontaneous, the presence of a catalyst will do absolutely nothing because it's just not going to happen in the first place. So here we have um, an energy diagram, reactants, products, our initial and final states. Um, and thermodynamics is the subject of this chapter, and that's the study of spontaneity of reactions. Is this reaction going to happen on its own or not? Kinetics, which is what we talked about in chapter 14, um, has to do with how fast the reaction goes. And so there we're looking at the intermediate states and what's going on there, and that's going to determine the speed of the reaction. So thermodynamics, um, we're looking at initial and final states, and then also whether it's spontaneous. Now, it is possible to make a non-spontaneous process happen. We do it all the time but it requires an external energy supply. It's not going to happen on its own. You have to put energy in it to make it happen. Any questions? Of a non-spontaneous, like, chemical reaction? Um, non-spontaneous chemical reaction. Okay, so you can take water and decompose it into hydrogen and oxygen gases. Does that happen to a glass of water that's sitting on the table? No. It's not a spontaneous process. Hydrogen and oxygen gases, if you spark, if they have just a tiny spark, they will spontaneously and highly exothermically react to form water. That's the spontaneous process. The non-spontaneous process is the opposite, the reverse reaction, taking water and decomposing it into hydrogen and oxygen gases. You can do that in a cup of water at home by dropping a 9-volt battery in there, and you'll see 
bubbles form at the terminals. Doesn't work in distilled water. Works in tap water. And so what's going on there? The energy from the battery is causing this non-spontaneous reaction to occur. Does that help? So that spontaneous is something that would happen on its own. Mm -hmm. Non-spontaneous is like you are just... Right. Spontaneous will happen on its own without ongoing input. Non-spontaneous will not happen by itself. It requires external forces, generally energy, to keep it going. So we can think about um, a rock on a hillside. Now, the rock might be kind of wedged. Maybe there's a smaller rock under it. And so it's sitting there, but it's kind of precarious. Is it rolling down the hill? No. If you give it a nudge, will it roll down the hill? Yeah. You don't have to keep doing anything to keep it rolling down, right? But if you want the, the rock to go back up to where it was, you can push it up the hill, but you have to exert energy on it all the way up to the original position. So that's spontaneous versus non-spontaneous. Any other questions?